For many years I, I had this thought in the back of my mind that humanity was evil or that we were like the main source of, of destruction. But seeing our history backwards, like 96% of our time in this earth has been like mutual relationships and it has been good. It, we've just been lost like for 2000 years or something. So it's not that much in the spectrum of, of time. The, the towns that we are visiting, the area that we are visiting, is uh, an example that brings me hope uh, and that makes me feel... Um, yeah, it, 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 it makes me have a reference. It makes me like... Ma <laughs> I remember once uh, somebody asked me, oh Santi, uh, who is like your figure to be like uh, your top guide of, of nature immersion experiences? And I was, oh, th this man Don Pedro. And they were like, but does he have a book? Or how, how do I know who Don Pedro is? And I was like, you have to get there. You have to be there to know who Don Pedro is. For example, aquella es un árbol de estos. Y de las que veníamos en el trayecto también. Even though Don Pedro didn't study university or doesn't have a title, he is one of the most, yeah, it's an all-around expert, from botany to, to kitchen. I mean, he, he's an all-around expert. So Don Pedro is going to be our uh, local guide. He's Chinantec. He can tell you any plant and any tree in Chinantec, scientific and Spanish, the uses, how does it grow. He has been a really important uh, person for his town in, in, in the last 40 years or so. He is an example for me. In ella están todos los servicios que el ser humano lo necesita. Entonces, si un viajero, si un caminante quiere hacer esta caminata, Le apuesto que aquí le va a cambiar la vida porque tendrán la única experiencia de poder respirar un oxígeno puro. The year was 1974. Pedro Osorio Hernandez had just arrived in Oaxaca City after a taxing three-day journey from his home village. Using a machete-like knife to carve his way through the dense jungle of the Sierra Norte, following in the footsteps of his ancestors. This vital path has connected generations of remote mountain villages with the outside world and city life. The trail we now know as Sendero del Jaguar. Don Pedro grew up in Santa Cruz, Tepetutla where school life finished after three years. Eh, de niño, pues, aquí no hay, no está completa la primaria en la comunidad. De niño tuve que caminar todo lo que es el contexto de bosque eh, y llegar hasta la carretera federal, que en ese tiempo, pues, era la única que estaba, no había terracería, no había, todo era, ahora sí, a pie. Entonces, Una vez que llego a Oaxaca era con el propósito de terminar mi primaria, porque aquí no me había ter tercero. Entonces el cuarto, el quinto y el sexto grado, este, arribo a Oaxaca. Water is a really big struggle in Oaxaca City. 
Yeah, it's a problem. And uh, one of the main, like, Eureka moments for Don Pedro was when he was little, uh, like, uh, for primary school, uh, he was sent to Oaxaca City to study. And uh, every day he had to, to wake up at 4.30 in the morning and go to the local uh, fountain to collect water and to make a queue of, uh, of more than an hour. He will go to get a, a whole queue to collect water from, from a little uh, public spring. Later on, uh, some years passed, they, they clear-cutted a, a little forest that was on the hill that he lived and he collected water. So the, the water spring dried and he was really happy because he didn't have to, to wake up anymore because they had to, to bring a truck to, to bring water to the whole colony. But afterwards that made him uh, like analyze what was the problem of, of Oaxaca City and one of the main reasons of, of the water struggle is their relationship with, with the woodlands that were like nearby. Allá hubo un momento cuando eh, ya no llegaba agua a esa llave que corríamos todos, los de la colonia. Yo estaba feliz porque no tenía que levantarme temprano, ¿sí? No, pero al llegar acá yo hago una gran reflexión con mis compañeros. Bueno, ¿cómo te fue entonces? Eh, le había pasado lo mismo. Entonces... Ahí nos sentamos a evaluar y decir, tenemos todas las condiciones. ¿Por qué no cuidamos el agua para que no nos pase eso? Porque yo recuerdo que había un bosque más arriba de donde hacían el acopio de agua para luego enviarlo a, a diferentes llaves. ¿no? Entonces, quitan el bosque y ya no había agua. Pusieron construcciones y construcciones, ¿no? Entonces... So when, when he returned to his hometown, he was like, man, we have water everywhere and all the water is drinkable. We have to take care of this because I don't want to, to be like Oaxaca City. So they didn't cut like the, the trees that were around the springs. And then they saw that the relationship of the animals with the springs and, and that's the main reason why they have jaguars in the mountains, because they took care of water and everything is connected to water. That eventually comes to the biggest uh, carnivore mammal on the Americas, no? See. See. The global demand for timber and paper products increased, and the short-term economic benefit of logging became very attractive. Don Pedro stuck by the ancient methods of subsistence farming and fought for the conservation of their surrounding jungle. He knew that widespread logging would have a devastating effect on the ecosystem that they as humans relied so heavily on. The local authorities began to listen and soon they turned their efforts into preserving their natural resources and that in itself became the essence of what makes this region so special. <laughs> It's a whole area, but it's the Chinantec region, Chinantecos, and uh, they have been around the area since we don't even know when. We are going to this re region where they have lived for hundreds of years, and uh, the route that we are doing is called Sendero del Jaguar. We are the first uh, tourism group that uh, the community has allowed us to, to come by. From two years from now, since the pandemic, they wanted uh, like low-impact tourism to come, but the pandemic didn't allow it, and now we are the first group to, to come. These people have made the choice, the communal choice, of conservation, but it's not conservation in, in, the, in the colonizing way of seeing conservation, you know, where humans are in this side and, and, and the wilderness is in this side. Uh, when, when we see things, that dichotomy, that uh, duality is one of the main reasons why we are messing things up, because we are nature as well.
maybe a lot of, of people of, of my generation or our generation are struggling with uh, what's coming ahead and what's happening right now in the climate crisis and many other crises. And these people are taking conservation in, in a kind of way that uh, still lets them uh, do the things that they uh, are doing since hundreds of years in the woods. So it's a kind of conservation that really, uh, yeah, it's really inspiring for me because it, it shows me that I can still be myself and still care of nature. We're going to have the opportunity to connect with, with the local people who are amazing and really loving and, and care a lot for their land. And one of the things that I want to share with the group is to have an, a living example of how we can treat our relationships, our more than human relationships, and that way we can uh, benefit the land and, and ourselves as well in, in that exchange. The Chin Tech way of life gave an amazing example of our ability to connect with the land in which we live. They have to have a connection to their land, because if they don't, they won't survive there. Este puede ser de un echadero de un puma o de o de un zorrillo, porque la tierra está fresca. Si es que nadie entrara, estuviera verde y adentro con heno adentro. Mm. Claro. pero se ve la tierra entonces significa que sí sí la habitan bueno utiliza este para preparar cestos una artesanía ahí entonces pero esto es el puro corazón mm. entonces más ahí abajo vamos a revisar el tema de esto pero sí son plantas que, que viven allá no es del árbol sino que alguna planta epífita que está tirando sus raíces this place is really important for me because it has shown me different ways of existing as a human being and how can I relate in a way that is more in tune with my surroundings. Uh, I can look at living examples of how the people relate to their land and to themselves and to family and to their social bondings and uh, I find it really, really inspiring. Oh, let you know we from the EQ. Yeah, can't you hear me? Oh, how do you do to let you know that I'm a little bit of Nene at it so my lip from the home. Nelly la no a cahoons a ha now a mazo conquer or lila to toss let at me a la hunt so do Santa Cruz de Petto tutla cala hun who do go home. The e in a itun ha hunta the re cala hun ha cia ya. Siendo todo qué está pasando en el planeta en este momento. Entonces, con todas las garras, nosotros defendemos estos bosques, porque está en nuestras manos. Nosotros nos hemos apropiado de esto y por lo tanto nosotros que tenemos el compromiso de apropiarlo, cuidarlo y defenderla a que no se derribe. Porque yo sé la historia que está pasando a nivel mundial, de que bueno a la velocidad muy, muy, muy importante van derribando los bosques. Eh, y a eso se le llama economía, a eso se le llama el, el, el progreso. Y yo digo de que esto, lo que aspiramos es que estos bosques se mantengan muchos años más. Este proyecto es 
absolutely fundamental for the development and and learning of yeah of our sort of modern world and people that have an interest in, in creating a life that is considering the, what we're a part of, the greater sort of existence of, of humans on Earth. We need to go out and find those experiences that are going to teach us those things and learn from others that have taken the steps to, to not just think from the mind's eye of, of, of a human being. What the project does is brings together Santi, who is a bridge to the modern world and brings together an Indigenous elder that has an amazing amount of information and learnings to, to pass on. The project is the vehicle for that transfer of information. This can be implemented in all parts of the world where the Indigenous voice is so, so key to learn how to coexist in, in, in our life on this planet.